Hey again, everybody. Uh, this is Dry Fly Ride, the Dry Fly Ride channel. Um, had a couple hours before work. Uh, the wife and kids are gone, and I started building my raised beds yesterday for the garden. Um, we got five, one, two, three, five out of nine done, and I was going to come out here and just uh, see if I could get a few more done <clears throat> before work. And I said, hey, why not? I'll make another video. I'll show you how I'm making the raised beds. Um, and while I mentioned in the last video that I'm not, uh, I don't have any experience gardening, maybe once years ago, so I don't really know a whole lot about that. I have made a lot of things out of wood, so maybe I can at least give you a few pointers on how to put together a simple raised garden bed. They're very simple to do. It's a simple box. Anybody who's used a drill and a saw before can put together a raised bed without any problem. You don't need to go and buy those special little brackets that they sell in the seed catalogs and online that put the two pieces of wood together to make a corner. Completely unnecessary. You need three screws and a drill bit. Um, two drill bits. You're going to actually drill pilot holes. I'm going to get into that. Um, yeah, and that's it. You just screw this stuff together. Um, so here's my wood. I already got it all pre-cut. Um, I'm making some 4x8s and some... What is that? 3 by 8 3 by 8 and 6 by 8 I think that's what it is um, so what I did is they sold 8 foot planks which is handy you don't have to cut those and they sold 12 foot planks which I just cut in half to make 6, six foot ones and then I cut those in half to make 3 foot ones I already used the 3 foot ones he's got to be 4 foot 4 foot 4 foot 6 foot 8 foot so yeah that's all, all there was to it. Um, so the four foot ones I just cut one of these guys in half. So you had an eight foot, I cut it in half, got a four foot, took the twelve foot, cut those in half, I got some six foot, um, and that's it. Uh, the lumber I used is just the regular Douglas fir, I think it was, lumber. It's not pressure treated, and I would love to sit here and tell you that, oh, I didn't get pressure treated because I didn't want the chemical treatment to leach into the soil and blah 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 blah. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm going to be honest with you. I did it because I'm cheap, alright? Um, if I bought the pressure treated stuff, it probably would have cost another 80 bucks or something like that. And if I can save 80 bucks and risk the wood rotting out, <clears throat> rotting out in who knows how many years, that's fine. Um, so yeah, just untreated, regular lumber. Um, the dimensions are 2 by 10. Um, I had a mental tug of war when I was at Home Depot. Should I go 8 inch? Should I go 10 inch? I went with a 10 inch. I spent a few extra dollars because ideally I'd like to bury them a little bit to help from weeds getting into the garden. So um, yeah, everything's already pre-cut so I'm not going to show you any cutting and I'm going to show you how we attach them to make some beds and I'll show you actually here's some the ones they finished yesterday here I'll show you these right now say so, hey, here's the beds I made yesterday I just kind of got them shoved in here by the way welcome to my garage um, I know it's a mess but it's a garage garage is supposed to be messy so yeah I took the ones I finished I just shoved them in here and we're gonna wait for spring to come and uh, then we'll get them outside by the way it is winter it is February this is my backyard snow is everywhere there is the hoop house I built in the fall I'll give you another video on the hoop house, uh, maybe as the snow melts. And then out here is where all the beds are going to go. Let's go say hi to the chickens. Hey chickens. Hi chicken. Yeah, one of them's missing. Alright, let's go back to building the raised beds. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our planks, and it doesn't matter which one you use, as long as you're using the same side, you're drilling your holes into the, uh, pick a side, the long, the length of the width, make sure you're drilling both your holes on each of the opposite side, so you're not drilling some holes on your width and then some holes on your length. If it's going to be on your length for one plank, make it the length of the, make it the opposite side that you want your holes on, so it's even, everything's going to be even, Stephen. Um, pilot holes. Um, one of the things I learned growing up, building many things, is you got to drill pilot holes. 
Never just take your screw and screw it directly into the wood. That causes your wood to split. There goes my drill. Um, that causes your wood to split, and then you get all mad, and then you gotta go back to Home Depot, which for me is like a half hour away, and I don't wanna drive a half hour away to go back to Home Depot. Pilot holes. What you gotta do is you gotta take a drill bit that is smaller than your screw, and you gotta drill holes where you're gonna put your screws. Otherwise, you put your screw in, and that pushes the wood, and it splits your wood, and then you get all mad. Drill the hole, that allows the wood, or the screw, to go into the wood, nice and even steven, no splitting, everything just glides right in, and your life is happy, happy, happy. Um, so what you do is you take a drill bit, you take your screw, and you're gonna put them right on top of each other. And I'll give you a close up here, all right? All right, so, if you can kind of see that there, you want your drill bit to be a little bit smaller than your actual screw, because your goal is to have the little spiral threads to actually bite into the wood without the base or the, the, the center of the screw hitting your wood. So that's the part you want to eat in. So we got the right size bit for our screw. By the way, I'm using a three and a half inch screw. Um, it's a deck screw. It's got this coating that won't rust and kind of screw up your wood. Um, so yeah, we got the bit, we got the screws. Let's go drill our holes. All right, I'm gonna make three holes. One on the top, one on the bottom, one in the middle. And I'm not going to bother measuring them out. This isn't rocket science. These boxes aren't works of art. They're just they're boxes. You're throwing dirt in them. Um, so they don't have to be perfect. Nothing's got to be measured out. The one thing I will say is try to go through the wood at an even angle. You know, don't go in it like this. Don't go in it like this or like this or like this. Because if you go in it like this, what's going to happen is your screw is going to come in, go into your next piece of wood, and it's going to start coming out the side. And we don't want that. We want it to go straight through into the next piece of wood. And the other thing, I'm just eyeballing it. Two by four, it's going to sit in there about like that. So we kind of want to aim for somewhere right around here. Drill the holes. Nice and even, Steven. Through. Bang, bang, bang. And we'll see where we end up. around we're going to do the other side just cut myself on this little thing oh boo-boos okay so now we got our holes drilled. Let's do it to one more piece of wood. All right, now we are ready to screw everything all together. We got all our pilot holes drilled on each side. Now we just need to take the other sides, screw them together. So we're gonna change our drill bit to our um, screwdriver bit. Tighten it on up there. And now another tip I'm going to give you is these planks of wood all have an arc to them. Um, not this way, but this way. So right now this piece of wood has got this arc in it, so it kind of bends like this. I have found that it's easier to take that arc and put it so the mouth, if you will, is facing the piece of wood that you're screwing into. Because if it's like if it's the other way and it's facing outwards, your screws are going to try to fight to bend that wood back. So instead of trying to fight that, you're going to put it the other way. So everything kind of is already already where it wants to be. And the only thing you're trying to fight is maybe the the middle. And usually that middle screw will suck it all together, and you won't have any gaps. But again, 
we're just talking about raised garden beds here. It, it doesn't need to be perfect. So if there's a little gap in the middle, not a big deal. Dirt's not going to come out of it. So we got our eight foot section. We got some holes in it. We're going to grab a uh, four foot and we're going to put it together. Drill away. You see how easy that went in? That would not have gone in so easily had we not drilled those pilot holes. It would have been tough to get in and the wood probably would have split on me. But it didn't happen because we took the time to drill pilot holes. Now the other thing I like to do is, once I got one side done, I like to flip it up and do the next side while it's kind of standing on its side like this because it's a lot easier to, to screw your screws in coming from the top than it is coming from the sideway, sideways and um, it just makes life easier. So while you kind of struggle for the first one, do yourself a favor, flip it over on the side, do your next one like this, it's just a lot easier. Side, fill it up with dirt and we're gonna be good to go. I think this one's got some uh, cabbage and cauliflower growing in it. Alright, can't wait. Bye guys.